Patrice Drago. I'm a visual artist in Annapolis, Maryland. I'm a member of MFA, Maryland Federation of Art, a great organization, and I'm also a, an artist in residence at Maryland Hall for the Creative Arts. I'm coming to you today to give you a video tour of my home studio where I've been working exclusively for the past two and a half months since the pandemic. Normally I would give you a tour of my Maryland Hall studio, but I thought today could be valuable and I could show you the spaces that I work in here and how they compare or contrast to how I work at Maryland Hall and also how it complements what I do at Maryland Hall. This studio had become overflow over, over the years for the work that I do over there that I wasn't able to keep in the studio. It had excess canvases, shipping materials, presentation materials. So it wasn't exactly in uh, working shape in terms of working large. Uh, I always do work my, uh, paint my small paintings here, but I had to get everything so that I could continue my obligations during the pandemic. So I'm excited to show you how I use the space, which will give you some insight into me as an artist and also be able to show you some work. So I'm looking forward to it. Hope you enjoy it. When I first moved in, I put my easel over here and painted looking out at the deer and the forest, and it was beautiful. But I soon realized that the bulk of the space was behind me, and this place was set up as an apartment. So I turned this into uh, what was the natural living area and created a zen space for me to look at my um, magazines and all my inspirational books. Um, and I like it because it keeps it separate from the actual painting area. And I'm lucky to have this space. It's, it's a nice little getaway, I've taken many naps there. Here are some of the frames that I was telling you about. They're much more organized now for easy access. There's also my oil painting card has all my oil painting stuff, plus a few projects on top of it. I worked on cruise ships in my 20s and I bought these two pieces from an artist in the Iron Market at Port-au-Prince, Haiti. Love them and I love that they're in my studio. This drawing table is in the perfect spot in my studio. I don't have one at Maryland Hall because I don't need one. I'll tell you about that in a second, but I'll show you the table. I bought these trestle legs and tabletop at Ikea. Very easy to change the incline of the top by changing the peg where it is located on the, on the holes. This top has a lip, so in case it's steeply inclined, the pens and pencils won't drop off and also have one at the top to keep things in place. Plus the bonus of this frosted glass, all I have to do is turn on this lamp that I've put below and uh, adjust it. And I've got a light table. I uh, don't do mock-ups of my paintings, but I do every now and then do drawing series. I love these tools, calligraphy. I love drawing with calligraphy tools. Um, but right now I am working on this drawing series. I've got about 20 of them. I'm deciding which ones I want to use that I will then have printed and I will hand paint. So the finished product will be painted and hand signed. Plus I'm going through all my drawings of my dog Shannon who passed away two years ago So uh, for her book that I'm creating. A lot of these tools are old friends. Had them for a long time and um, just always is comforting. Speaking of which, just other things I like. I have pictures of me and my friends and a um, poster of my dragonflies. I love damselflies. They're gorgeous. But I don't do, oh, little whimsy. 
<laughs> I don't do mock-ups of paintings. I don't even do mock-ups of my um, paintings of birds. I just jump right in. I will do studies and mock-ups for commission paintings uh, because there are certain elements that the client requires. I was commissioned to create a painting live during uh, the 125th anniversary gala for the Clark School of Engineering at the National Portrait Gallery in November of last year. So I did a lot of research to identify which icons and symbols and elements I wanted to include in this large abstract so I could be prepared to create this painting in two hours. So this table is where I created all that prep work. This is my reference board, though it's not being used that way right now. I just have my prints set up here because I've had a couple of clients come in uh, in the last two months with a mask and uh, social distancing, so I wanted to display my prints that I usually have on display at Maryland Hall. But normally I have here the uh, a visual library of the experiments that I create so that I can write, refer back to them. I put make notes. It's a, if I'm trying to create a new combination, I'm working with new materials and I want to see what, what particular medium will look like with this particular pigment or over a water-soluble crayon, that kind of thing. And so when I'm working on something two months from now, I can look back and find my notes. Very easy to put together. I just bought some L-shaped molding and put it together with the vice grips. And this is the kind of thing I normally have on there, They're just the little reference pieces uh, to tell me and guide me so I don't have to remember it all. Continuing around, I have this massive amount of storage, which has been a godsend during the pandemic, but I will say the more storage you have, the more storage you use. I use paper in my paintings, and I've invested a lot over time in beautiful papers from places like Paper Source and Art Things. And if I were to tuck them away in a flat file, I wouldn't know what I have, I wouldn't remember. But having them on the wall installed like this means that when I'm painting, I can look over and say, oh my god, that's going to look gorgeous in here. That's the perfect piece for my painting. So I've set this up here, and I also did the same thing at Maryland Hall. And it's just a beautiful work of art in itself. It was very easy to set up. I simply bought sea hooks and dowels, screwed the sea hooks into the wall, and measured about eight inches apart, uh, one from another. And all you have to do then is lift it out, and you've got access to your paper. Pretty cheap, easy to do. I'm not usually as crowded on this big table, uh, but this is where I do my small works, and I did just finish two pieces that I had um, added to two that had already been on display. I love working on this cradled panel. The fact that they're primed uh, means I can use the white like I do on paper. I don't have to cover it over, and it's just they're nice and smooth, and um, they're they're just really uh, great to paint on. Uh, this one, and I'll probably do this to the other two, I took paint uh, yellow and, and put it around the sides because they don't need a frame. Uh, they don't even need to be painted, but I did. And then all you have to do is wire it and it's ready to hang. This is a, a good example of how I approach some of my abstract work by starting with line and then uh, shapes of color and different sizes of those shapes and then back and forth with water-soluble crayon or more wax pastel and back and forth and back and forth. Just very intuitive, free-flowing, and very fun. Um, a very enjoyable process and just to see uh, where it leads. And I thought about covering these paintings with like a clear tar gel to give it a resin type look. But as I look more closely at them, I really like the idea that there's all these different textures. And uh, like the, the white on the, on the uh, panel is matte, and then there's a, somewhat of a sheen to the paint. And then there's the wax, uh, the crayon. Uh, so I like the different textures, and I think I'm going to leave them just like that. This table right now is multi-purpose. I have them in casters that I got at Home Depot. I'm using this right now as a painting cart. That's usually not there. But at Maryland Hall, I have my two carts, and one of them is a plate glass, which is my palette. So I have that here. I'm just using these two pieces of glass for my palette. And this table is great. Um, it's usually, like I said, not as crowded, but serves a great purpose. 
Creating my abstract paintings is a very organic process for me. It often starts, uh, the inspiration can come from anywhere and it's often very different for every series, but uh, I start out with a sense of color that I want to use, the color palette, and a uh, vague sense of the composition, which will alter as the series continues. But I usually start with a line uh, drawing that may not ever show up uh, at all in the finished product. It's, they often start on the floor or on the table, as in the case of these two pieces that are 24 by 24. And then they'll end up on the easel if I'm here, or on the wall if I'm at Maryland Hall, and back and forth. And there's a lot of energy involved in that. And I love the physicality of moving not only the paintings around, but actually the work that I have to do and putting my whole body into the painting, um, especially on the larger pieces. And I think throughout my paintings, I'm constantly striving for the balance to find that uh, back and forth. All of my work is back and forth and back and forth, and I'm looking to that point when I can look that step back and say, ah, I don't know exactly what it is. Sometimes I don't know what it is until I get there, but um, it's very satisfying, and when I really let the painting tell me what it wants, that is when I am, I feel like I've achieved the most successful uh, paintings. It's really gratifying for me to see my finished works on display in an exhibition or installed in their new home. It gives me an opportunity to see the work in the way that others see it, and I wasn't able to see it until that point. It's a sense of completion, and I get to say goodbye before moving on to my next series. So it's actually still a part of the painting process. It's a way of closing it off. So that's my studio tour. I hope you enjoyed it. I thank you for your time and walking through my studio with me and my art practice. I love talking about art and my process, so I'm sure there were opportunities for me to take a breath that I did not. Thank you for bearing with me. I also want to thank MFA and the Four Rivers Heritage Area. These studio tours are such a great way to connect um, the community with the art and the artists that is right here and available to them. So forever grateful. And just want you to know that I really do like having studio visitors because talking about my art, talking about art in general, feeds my creative process. So when we're open, up and running, I do hope to see you in my physical space at Maryland Hall. And until then, be well, stay safe, enjoy art. See you soon.